Wow. Once again, SmackDown would be really terrible again. From the Godfather Soldiers and Loose Women. And, um, I, um, it's like Chad Sinshaw said, I like to dress up like children, check and sing like Lion Richie. Dance like things around, like to get in the hot tub, them when we sweat them, make me try to be wet, referring to it, um, Eddie Murphy doing James Brown pressure on Saturday Night Live back in the 80s. So I watched the reruns of Saturday Night Live when I was little on Comedy Central. Name my topic tonight for SmackDown was Overbooked in Omaha 2, Part 2. Um, wait, oh wait, Overbooked in Omaha is SummerSlam going to be, gonna, um, be any good one week from tomorrow night. So much I got to say. Before I um, open up the show tonight, I'm going to open up the show with a little, some, a little bit of music. Maybe the, uh, I'm going to open up the show with a little, little song um, called... Uh, It's called um, She Bop by Cindy Lauper, number one hit single, 1984. So I want all of you to stick around, right back. So I got to say about tonight's Monday night, tonight's Raw, I mean SmackDown. So stick around, right back, get, get the music clip. Get your music set up. I'll be right back.
She bought Single Locker, number one hit single for Oh, second. Of one. Except something. My mistake. Let's get down to business. Um. Uh. Well, name my top tonight is um Overbook. And um, Overbook and um, Omaha. It's SummerSlam. Gonna be a good show one week from tomorrow night. Yeah, all yeah, um, yeah, all you heard it. Number one hit single, um, she bought earlier by Cindy Lauper. All you heard. Number one single from 1984. Let's get down to business. I hope all of you enjoyed you know, some of you watched some anniversary. All right, let's see. They kicked off the show tonight with um, Bloodline, Pack and Cody Rhodes. And, uh,. Bloodline was backstage and all that stuff. Then we'll see a little match, LA Knight versus Santos Escobar. I mean, Omaha. Boy, oh boy. Hope all of you enjoy, we're um, uh, watching the Olympics in Paris right now. Yeah, the bells ringing, uh, ringing their honor, and they were see two men fighting. Wow, Santos did a little six nine one um Wow he stole Escobar was what why in the world was Escobar stealing Ray Mysterio's one six one nine later on the match um later on the match um Ellen Knight was with the power slam Electra Lopez that evil woman that Trent gets on the ring apron that distracts the referee. Logan Paul runs that down and gets on the ring apron. He goes for a right hand, but LA Knight ducks and hits him with a clothesline. LA Knight turns around and turns around and that's good. Sorry about that. Um, Turns around. One second. Turns around. And Escobar with a kick to the face. He goes for the Phantom Driver, but LA Knight lands on his feet and hits him with a BFT. He goes for the cover and gets and gets the pin. Winner LA Knight. Then we see this little promo, this little promo with um, Logan Paul attacking LA Knight. He stomps on LA Knight and grabs him, but LA Knight pushes him to the corner and stomps on him. Escobar hits LA Knight with a flying knee to the face, and he helps Logan Paul up. Both men double team LA Knight, who was down. Logan Paul gets on the top rope and hits LA Knight with a fly splash. Then we cut back 
Uh, and Naomi tells Brian she doesn't know what when Blair Davenport's problem is, is with her. In come Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill who hype her up and tell her that they have some have to take care of some had to take had to go T C B take care of business. Then we see a little interview with um, Logan Paul. And um, you know, I really hope I really hope I hope that LA Knight, LA Knight will I hope they really have that have um that um Logan Paul at Peace Eric and Peace Guard drop that title LA Knight, but I think WWE might not do that one week from tomorrow night. Yeah, um we see a little pro in ring promo by Jay Cargill, the storm, and Bianca Bella, the EST in the ring. Bianca says she will cut the chase. Alwood and Don will have been ghosted to them. They ask where the women's head champions are at. They tell them to stop ducking now. Alba Fire and Alba Don's music hits and they attack Bianca Belair, target from behind. Bianca throws Don to the outside and Jay, and Jay Gorilla presses Alba Fire over to the top, over the top onto Don. Yeah, Tiffany's really pissed off about um what what um Tiffany's really pissed off about Bailey destroying her briefcase. That's too bad, I really don't care. Trash. And when she wants she wants nine jacks that um nine my whole jacks um to help her. Then we see a little match, um Tag Team Gauntlet Match, Baron Corbin and Paul Cruz versus Legado De Legal De La Fantasma. And, um... See, um... Later on in the match, Paulo and Angel are tagged in. Apollo with a kick to the side of the head. Paul with the free German suplex. Paul climbs to the top rope, and jumps, but Angel with the knee to the face. Angel with a back breaker goes for the cover, but Corbin breaks it up. Humberto clotheslines Corbin to the outside, but Corbin drags him to the outside. He throws Humberto into the sack, into the ring steps. Corbin tags himself in, and he hits Angels with the end of the days. He goes for the pin and cover. Goes for the cover and gets the pin. Like all done, Phantasm are, are eliminated. Then comes the Street Profits. Then later in the match, Corbin with a close line top rope onto Ford. Grass Ford, but Ford hits him with a kick side, kick side of the head, and both men are down. Dawkins and Apollo are tagged in. Dawkins with a close line. Followed by a suplex, he goes for the cover, but Corbin breaks it up. Corbin goes for the spear into the corner onto the floor, but Ford moves it out of the way. Throws Paul, throw, Paul throws Dawkins to the outside. Paul and Ford look at each other and runs toward the opposite ends of the ring, and lands splashes onto Dawkins and, Cor and Corbin. Paul and Dawkins get get in the ring, and Dawkins with a with the right hand. Ford is tagged in and hit him with hit him with the revelation. Ford goes for the cover and gets the pin. Paul, Baron Corbin and Paul Cruz are eliminated. The outcome's pretty deadly. They get eliminated. Out come the OC. And uh let's see. Later on, the OC uh, get eliminated. Now come the bloodline. Time to talk. Hold on, I'll be right back. Hold on one second.
I'm back. A little break and break. Um, a Tommy Tonga with cannonball onto Dawkins in the corner, caught who was tagging, stuff like that. And uh, Bloodline won the match later on. Why does everything have to be about the Bloodline crap? Then we see um, the A Town Dunn, the Grayson Waller, and Austin Theory come out here run, run, running, come out here talking. They come out in here and they, and um they talk about um Terrence um talk about Terrence Crawford theory call Crawford out and tell him that they he should they will he will come out and apologize to the greatest tag team in the world. Out comes the boxer and Wallace says he disrespected him last week. So unfair that he apologizes to them tonight. Who are these guys who I mean who really cares about, about Waller and Theory? They deserved it, and Crawford, well, Crawford knocked them out, and they deserved it. Where you go, Crawford? Shut them up. Here we see a little video package of Cody Rhodes interviewing and all that stuff. Talk about um how he won the title, you know. I really, you know, and um you know I, I can say this: if they if WWE if they drop that title to Cody Rhodes, fuck them, fuck WWE. If they drop that title, Cody Rhodes did to um Sol Sioka. Hell with WWE. It's a little terrible pay per view. I mean, I mean, he, I mean, he's trying. He's trying to um, cut. I mean, I don't know why in the world he um Soul Circus trying to um do what Roman Reigns did. This is. I mean, this bloodline crap needs to end. Yeah, Andrade is backstage. Interviewed by Brian Saxon. Talk about um United States champion and Carmella and um Carmella Hayes and so now it's time for the main event. You see the main event, Tiffany um the Barbie doll won't be Stratton, nine jet my whole jacks versus Bailey Mission. What happened was um okay. As Mishan was walking down to the ring, Nia Jax, Tiff Stratton, and Tecker from behind. Out comes Baylor with a kendo stick, but Nia and Tiffany running away. She checks up on Mishan, and Baylor starts to yell at referee. Tiffany and Baylor get in the ring, and Tiffany, Tiffany and Nia run um, on Tiffany and Nia run away. But she checks up on Mishan, and Baylor starts to yell at referee. Tiffany and Baylor get in the ring, and the bell rings. Tiffany. Rings Bailey with right hand. She throws Tiffany to ropes, but Tiffany with a shoulder tackle. Tiffany poses in the ring, but Bailey kicks her down from behind. Sliding clothesline by Bailey. She goes for the cover, but Tiffany kicks out. She grabs Tiffany, but pushes her, but pushes her into the corner. And Tiffany, corner, Tiffany with an elbow to the face, and Bailey falls towards the ring apron. Nine. Bailey knocks Nia down and she takes Tiffany. Bailey back into the ring. She rolls Tiffany up, but Bailey kicks out. Mission is back in the ring, Apron, but Nia drags her down, hits her with a small and drop. Who she is? All of a sudden, she, she there thinks she's both Rikishi and Yokozuna. Man, this is terrible. Then we will go back to the commercial. Nia and Tiffany double team Bailey in the ring. Nia goes to cover, but Bailey kicks out. Nia grabs Bailey and pushes her into the corner, and Bailey falls to the mat. Tiffany is tagged back in, and she hits Bailey with a splash in the corner. A chin light buys Tiffany, and she throws Bailey into the ropes, hitting her with a spine buster. Tiffany goes for the cover, but Bailey kicks out. Nia is tagged back, and she slams Bailey into the mat. 
Now with an elbow drop, Tiffany is tagged back in. She goes for a standing elbow, elbow, but elbow onto Bailey, but Bailey catches her, and she lands on a modified German suplex. Rishin gets gets into on the ring apron, and Knight and Jax is tagged in. Jax goes for a spear towards Bailey, but Bailey moves out of the way, and Knight spears the the ring post. Tiffany is tagged in as Mishin, in as Mishin, in as as is Mishin. She slams Tiffany face first onto the mat. Mishin with a tornado DDT. She goes for the cover, but Tiffany kicks out. Tiffany with a suicide dive onto Nia on the outside of the ring. Mishin climbs the second rope. She goes for a crossbody, but Tiffany moves out of the way. Nia is tagged in. And she goes for a splash onto Mishin, but Mishin moves out of the way. Bailey is tagged in. As she hits Nia with a knee to the face, Bailey climbs to the top rope and she lands the elbow drop. She goes for the cover, but Tiffany breaks it up. Bailey and Mishin throw Tiffany to the outside. Mishin is Mishin is in the ring to the referee and tells her to get out. It allows Tiffany to hit the Bailey with the Money in the Bank briefcase. She goes. She, okay, so Nia hits Bailey with the annihilator. She goes for the cover. And Nia gets the pin. Winners are Nia, or Nia Maho, Jackson, Tiffany, the Barbie doll, and B. Stratton. This is terrible. Then we see a little video of Solis Yoku talking to Aries. He tells Color Rose he will see him in the ring next week. And that the tag in the bloodline will win the tag team championship. And he will win the title at SummerSlam. He says if Roman Reigns has a problem with that, he knows where to find him. And that goes off the air. Boy, I could say this. This is terrible. This is a oh, terrible show tonight. You know, if they have, if WWE has, uh, WWE has Cody Rhodes. Drop that title to Solo. Damn, damn, damn WWE. I'm so tired of all this bloodline garbage. And this meeting needs to stop. Immediately. It really does. So, um, that's it for my little review for tonight's, um, SmackDown. Now you know what it's time for? It's time for something I like to do. It's time for... Soon. Oh, one second. Time for Justin's timeline, Justin's time capsule history of all the wrestling birthdays, wrestling history, and the pop culture. So yesterdays and today's. So let's get started. All of you hear that little thing was the thing from Back to the Future starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, one of my favorite movies. See, so let's get down to business.
Let's see, um, let's go yesterday, July 25th, one second. He was driving me crazy, you know that? One second, everybody. They have his computers acting up. Yesterday was a happy birthday to, yesterday was a happy 50th birthday to Kenzo Suzuki, Japanese wrestler. And yesterday was a happy, yesterday would have been a happy, see. Yeah, well, yesterday would have been a happy, he's born in 1967, he would have been In 57 yesterday, he was in 57 yesterday. His name was um Anthony Durante, better known by his real name Pitbull, the tick Pitbull number two of the Pitbulls ECW. He died of a drug overdose, heart attack, heart attack on September 25th, 2003. That was the soul. And in 1994, um, we lost a wrestler um, um yesterday. His name was Scott Peterson. I think he was a referee at, um, I think, Scott Peterson, he died on July 25th, 1994 in Dallas, in Dallas, Texas. And see some wrestling, um, yesterday, um, on Monday Night Raw, Ted DiBiase, um, is interviewed by, 
or what happened was um Nikolai of Dope um Tonka defeated Tonka defeated uh Nikolai Volkov, Native American Tonka defeated Nikolai Volkov and then the Macho Man Randy Savage came out and told Ted Biasi to pay up and give him his money. And then um Good old J.R. Jim Ross interviews uh, Lundra Blaze about her match against uh, a match against uh, Bull Nakano at SummerSlam 94. And uh, for, the, for the WWE women's title. What else? Uh, That was July 25th, um, July 25th, 1994. Then at a, and then at a, uh, there was a very special moment that happened on that day on July 25th. All of you, I know a lot of you remember that, that this day. July 25th, a very special moment between father and son. This happened at the Making Coliseum. This happened at the Making Coliseum. A very special moment between father and son, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes and the Natural Dusty Rhodes. A very special moment in the Making Coliseum in Making Georgia. Listen to this. Everybody, so bear with me just for a minute. I want to talk to my son in front of the whole world. When you were born, when you were a baby, when you were born, I went off to seek my fame and fortune. I neglected you. Then later on, I neglected you. Then lately I became this corporate cowboy, if you will. And I neglected you. And when it came down to choose a partner, I was off in Hollywood. 
and I neglected you. Let me tell you something. Fuck house, fuck. That's all they are, brother. Let me tell you something else. Terry Funk is nothing but a low life. Watermelon feet ain't sucking down. champions on August the 24th, you put your name on the dotted line. I don't want you to look for another partner. I don't want you to go and find another man. I don't want you to go out and get on your knees and beg another scum second pig to be your partner. I'm asking you if you can carry this old alley shit, old bin out, old spinning on your neck, I want to be your partner. See that? One of the best, best moments in WCW, the house show in the making costume. It was July 24th, 1994, between father and son, American Dream Dusty Rhodes. American Dream Dusty Rhodes and son, the natural Dustin Rhodes. We don't know it's in WWE is gold dust. We all missed the Dutton. American Dream, the common man. It was one of the best moments in the history of WCW. The best. Sad moment, very good, heartbreaking, heartbreaking moment right there. History of WCW. Let's see, um, let's see. Let's go. Yes, yeah, something else. So something else. Uh, let's go. This, uh. Trying to see something else. Um, Okay, um, Sunday Night Heat, Sunday Night on um, WWE Sunday Night Heat. Let's see,
Balvin is to be a Stephen Richards. Maven defeats Chuck Palumbo and Victoria defeats Jazz. And what else? Um, and on, and on, let's see on SmackDown. That was that was July. That was July twenty fifth, two thousand and four. Let's see what else. And on. Um, SmackDown. SmackDown, July 25th, 2014. SmackDown. Usos to be a Ryback Baxel, Bo Dallas to be a Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose to be a Zara, and No DQ match, Paige to be Naomi, with the help of, of Naomi's former tag team partner, Funko Dactyls, Cameron, Ray Wyatt, and to be R Truth, Roman Reigns to be Alberto Del Rio. And a couple of movies, and pop culture, a couple of movies released in theaters on, on July 25th. Yeah, 2014. Lucy Star, Scarlett Johansson, and Morgan Freeman was released in, on, in theaters. What else? Uh, Magic in the Moonlight Star, Colin Firth, and Marsha Mar Gay Harden was released in theaters, also co starring Emma Stone. Most Man Wanted starring late um, Phillips, um, Philip Seymour Hoffman in one of his final, final roles, Richard McAdams, William Defoe, and Robin Wright. And Hercules starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson was released in theaters. Happy Christmas starring Anna Kendrick, um, Melanie Linsky. And Lena Dunham was released in theaters. And As a Soul Gold starring Michael Douglas and Diane Keaton was released in theaters. And My Man is a Loser starring Michael Rappaport. Starring Michael Rappaport and John Stamos from uh, John Stamos and Tika Sumter, Sumter um, she was like a soap opera in recent theaters, and um, from Full House, yeah. The Tika Sumter, she was a uh, she was on a daytime show. Uh, she was in the movie Spark Girl, Medea, 
Christmas and uh, your shoes on one like to live. And uh, let's see, let's see what else. Um, Let's go to um, July 26th right now. Today's birthday is right. Um, July 26. Tessa Blanchard turns 20, uh, 29 today. Daughter of WWE, daughter of WWE Hall of Famer, wrestling legend, uh, WWE Hall of Famer, the Four Horsemen, Tully Blanchard. Tommy, Tommy Wildfire Rich turns. Sixty-eight. Roger Strong turns forty today, and Marty Skull turns thirty-six today. And um, pop culture's couple of moves recent theaters on this day, in nineteen seventy-four. Um, Born to Kill starring Late Warren Oaks and Uptown Saturday Night starring Sydney, the late Sydney Poirier and the still alive Bill Cosby. I like that movie. Real funny. Uptown Saturday Night. Let's see, um... Now this day in 1994 on ECW Hardcore TV. Yeah, Chuck, um, see. This is a really historical match right here um, on this day. The Tasmania, uh, um, the Tasmania Taz defeats Heck Myers. Uh, um, Bad Bree, Axel Rotten, and Ian defeat Don E. Allen and Joel Hartgood. Tommy Dreamer and the Funks defeat Jimmy Snook and the Pitbulls. 
And then we see um the Sandman cut um cut a little promo with a uh, woman, Nancy Benoit. Now this day in two thousand and four, Randy Orton on Monday Night Raw in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, your hometown um the hometown is a hometown of a good friend of mine that I'm friends with in, in the wrestling groups. And um it happened in Pittsburgh on this day in two thousand and four on Monday Night Raw. Um Randy Orton eliminate Randy Orton um becomes the um wins the battle royale become the number one contender for his evolutions friend buddy Triple H to face off at um face Chris Benoit at SummerSlam. Then we see the one of the most greatest matches in the in the history on this day in two thousand and four, the sixty man Iron Man match between Chris Benoit and Triple H for the World Heavyweight title. Until Eugene interferes and helps Chris Benoit win the match. It was a very one of the most greatest ma match historic one of the greatest matches, one of the greatest moments in history in WWE on this day. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a real hometown friend of mine. I know he was there. Monday Night Raw in uh in the Mellon Arena, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I know he was there. Yep, that happened on this day in 2004, 20 years ago. Monday Night Raw, July 26, 2004, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the Mellon Arena. Yeah. Um. And, uh, you know, this day in 1994, a song called I'll Make Love to You by Boyce and Man was released on this day in 1994. One of my favorite childhood songs. R&B single by um, Boyce and Man. Good song. And that's it for all of you. And um, that's it for my little, my wrestling, all of you enjoy my wrestling view. And my little time capsule history, time capsule history. And now I'm gonna close out the show. A little song, I'll close out the show by song. I will fi um, find you, um, find you from the movie The Virgin by Zed. So um, so I hope all of you have a good night. And here's some to close out the show tonight. Find you. From the mood diversion sung by Zed. Good night, everybody. I'm out of your peace. And subscribe to me to God for our soldiers and loose women. Number one hit single from 2014. The mood diversion.